my hero, uh, building a stronger club. Right. Take it away, Bruce. Okay, and so Kathy, I am going to just answer a question that came up. They asked okay. me to before Bruce starts. I'm going to be really quick. Um, okay. There was a question about um, the funding model for global grants and why is it that cash contributions are no longer matched by the World Fund. And the primary reason is that fundraising is down. There isn't enough money to go around and match cash. So the Rotary Foundation World Fund matches district designated funds and district designated funds match cash. And it's up to the individual district how much um, cash they match or if they even require cash. So um, hopefully that answers the question and anybody's welcome to email me if they want to really get into the weeds with that because I love to talk about it. <laughs> Thank you, Dorian. That's a great Thank answer. Thank you, Bruce. I appreciate your generosity of time. Sure, no problem. Okay. Well, uh, hello everybody. I'm glad to have my, my uh, opportunity has finally come around. Here's my, uh, I'm gonna put my hat on briefly, okay? This is my flying cap, my World War I flying cap. I'd love to wear this while I'm, you know, teaching this lesson. However, I can't hear very well because of the ear flaps. And they're, they're, these were done with, you know, back in the open cockpit days, these, these would protect your ears. Uh, of course, you can't hear anything otherwise. Ah, there we go. So we're gonna be talking about building a stronger club. And um, if I can get, um, the slide, not the slide, but to, uh, Jeff, if you'll bring up the first page. Okay, building a stronger club. Let me walk through this. And, and if we could make that just a little bit bigger, Jeff, yeah, that's better. Okay, so building a stronger club. Um, as, as I further uh, my Rotary journey, I can assist in delivering on Rotary's promise. We're gonna talk about what Rotary's promise is in just a minute, think about that. What is Rotary's promise? Um, actually, there's several, Rotary's promise shows up in several different places in Rotary, and I'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. So our session goals, um, when we're finished today, hopefully we'll have an opportunity to examine and uh, the varying types of expectations in rotaries. And, and when we talk about expectations, it's not just the expectations of what Rotary has for their members, but for what members have for what Rotary is going to do for them. Uh, we'll be exploring the consequences uh, of met and unmet expectations. Ooh, okay. And we'll also talk about how, how can we, you know, what can we do as Rotarians in our clubs um, to help in this delivering on Rotary's promise. The materials that we're gonna look at, um, and we'll do this right now real quick. If Jeff, if you could go to insert uh, BSC1, it's on it's the next page over on page 29. It's, these are the guiding principles. And what, what we're really gonna be mostly interested in here, I mean, these are things you probably have seen before. Um, the object of Rotary, the four-way test, obviously, which almost all clubs, uh, in, you know, as they start their, their their meetings with, but it's the avenues of service that we're going to be focusing on today. Club service, vocational service, community service, international service, and youth as avenues um, which we may uh, satisfy some of the expectations that our members have and our prospective members. Okay, um, Jeff, and then if you will switch over to the next one on BCS2. Then we have a, 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 an activity that you're gonna do, which I'll explain briefly in a minute. So I just wanna show you what this looks like. And finally, Jeff, if you will bring up Be A Vibrant Club, which is 2.45 EN. Um, we're not gonna actually be using Be A Vibrant Club, but, we will, but there are references in here uh, that, that talk about expectations. And Jeff, if you'll switch to the last page here, when we talk about some of the, there we go. If you look down on, on the, you know, the path to vibrancy, these are all tips and techniques that we teach. Right now, we're in the, uh, Governor Sonny has been having district assemblies where we've been going to each, each uh, uh, center of, um, we, we, we've already done the south, we're about to do the north and the central part of uh, uh, New Mexico, or actually our district 
of 5520, which includes all of New Mexico and part of West Texas. Um, and we are, but we've been talking about how to be a vibrant club. What does it take to be a vibrant club? We have a whole uh, 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 district assembly on that, that we've been doing three hours worth of training on that. And there is a section here on the tips and techniques down here. If you look at number one, two, three, four, left to right and going down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On number eight on the right one, fourth one down on the right side, there's the arrow. Uh, talks about making sure all members are involved in activities that genuinely, genuinely interest them. While being generally interested in something, it may be an expectation. Okay, so this is where, um, I just wanna show you the relationship between um, the being a vibrant club and building a stronger club where they meet. Okay, because this is something that you'll need to be uh, aware of um, when, if you are, if you are experiencing membership problems, and some of that may be due to the fact that maybe we aren't meeting the expectations that our student, that our, our new members have, or our, even our existing members. Okay, thank you, Jeff. You can go back to page 25, the uh, starting page. So, um, before we get started, one of the things that I wanted to make it, make sure everybody realized, when we talk about building a stronger club, and, and, and why this is so important is, um, I spent uh, three years as the district membership chair in District 5520. I had the option, this was back in 2008, 9, 8, 9, 9, 10, 10, 11, uh, in that time frame. Back when Rotary was very, very concerned about the fact that we were not growing as an organization, we were stuck at 1.2 million people. Um, and in 2010, 2011 time frame, um, Rotary International began a series of uh, Rotary presidential um, conferences around the world. And two of them were in our neighborhood, one in Denver, one in Phoenix. I went to both of those with, with, my, uh, um, with my district governor, and elect at one time, and then the district governor. And I came away with some very interesting ideas and thoughts about why things were going the way they were. We are still at 1.2 million people. We're still having problems growing. And basically the reason is, well, one of the big reasons is that 50% that of the new members that come in with, are gone within the first three years of Rotary. 50%, half of all the new members that come in are gone. This was, this was driven home in both the membership conferences I attended. I expected to see a lot of information there I'm talking about how to bring people, how can we, you know, if we're going to fix this problem, we need to bring more people in. And, and so I expected to see a lot of information about recruiting people. There was none, absolutely nothing in either of those conferences about recruiting. And they said, what they said was, we do a great job recruiting. We don't do a very good job on keeping the members that we recruit. That was what the focus was in both of those assemblies. So, and that's what this is all about is, and well, this is about a number of different situations, but the one that I think is most important and the one that I think Rotary believes is most important is keeping the people that we get. How can we keep half of the new people that come in? How can we keep them from leaving? And, uh, and you know, and one of the things that we, that we kept hearing in these conferences was most of the people who leave, and there's all kinds of reasons for leaving. You know, there's death, there's transfers you know, because of the job, there, there's any number of reasons. But the number one reason was that Rotary Rotarians, especially new Rotarians, never really understood what Rotary was all about. And so their expectations were completely different than what Rotary's expectations were. And they, so they said, well, this is not for me. And our club had several instances of like that, people coming in for the wrong reason. So, so what we're talking about now is building a stronger club and delivering on Rotary's promise. Okay, so what do we mean by that? And here I want to see, you know, does anybody have any ideas? What do we mean by Rotary's promise? Involve people to do services. Okay, service Patrick, project. say that again to involve people, including new members, to do service projects. Okay, so Rotary's promise is to involve people 
Okay, that's part of it. What else is there? Service above self. Okay, and who's that? Gordon. Gordon. Okay, you're not popping up on my, usually everybody pops up when you start talking, but I don't see you. Okay, say again, Gordon. Service above self. Service above self. Okay, so, all right, we're getting there. Again, what, are, what is meant by, road, what are we promising? A legacy. Le a legacy. A legacy of what, Lori? Of um, clubs being able to continue in the future, have future members. So it's, it could be planned giving legacy. Okay. And club continuation through the planned giving. Okay. All right. Community Anybody service. Else? Thank you, Lori. Anybody else with any ideas? What is Rotary's promise? Community service. To make your community, community service. Better place, better place than what it better is. Better place than what it ah, is. Thank you, Jenny. By the way, Jenny and I used to fly balloons together. Yay. Actually, we're still on the same crew. We just aren't flying balloons right now. I know. <laughs> That's a sad um, so Rotary's promise. Now, this is not to be confused. There is, there is two, there's, there's several different ways that this terminology is used. One, Rotary's promise is in conjunction with planned giving. Okay, this is not, this doesn't have anything to do with planned giving. Uh, Rotary's promise and planned giving is that you, when you pass away, you can have money, you, you can, you know, Rotary, you donate money to Rotary and they will then turn, uh, their promise is to, to donate, that, donate that to your designated uh, nonprofit in your name in perpetuity, you know, you know, for the next 10 or 20 years or something like that. That's, that's one of the ways that we look at Rotary's promise. But now I want to focus on the club. The promise in the club is, Rotary's promise is, we're, you know, there's a reason why people join. We need to know what that is. Those are expectations. People have expectations about what's going to happen when they become a Rotarian. Our promise is to make that happen. Okay. But in order to do that, we need to know what that promise is. And one of the things that we do in our club, Rotary Del Sol, that we've been doing for the last, oh, I'd say eight or nine years now, is we meet with our potential new members. We maybe take them out to lunch, something like that. And we find out what their expectations are. What are you looking for in Rotary? Is it, is it just to, you know, to have a place to um, socialize? Is it a place, do you want to give something back to the community? Do you want to work projects? Do you, you know, we need to know, you know, what are our new members, from, you know, what they're looking for. They're, the promise is from us is that we'll help you achieve your expectations. But we need to know what those expectations are. So we ask them what it is. And then we tell them what our expectations are of them as Rotarians in terms of, uh, getting you know involvement, um, participation, uh, attendance, and that sort of thing. So we give them this, the, the the what we're looking for too. So so Rotary's promise then many times maybe or maybe does not ever come to fruition. And if it doesn't, which is what which has been the case for years and years about, you know, because we're, we're losing so many of our new members because what they thought Rotary was all about and what we think Rotary was all about didn't match up. And they, so they left. So my, here's my question. Does your Rotary Club set expectations with its target audience about membership in the club? And if so, how? I've told you what we do in my club. One of the things that we do is through NEOS um, is to let and inform and teach, if particularly that word, folks about the different committees, how they function, why they function. <clears throat> and if that is a match with the strengths that that new or that prospective member has, then they can see themselves functioning in that role and being a part of that greater Rotary community. Okay, very good. Thank you, Sandy. Anybody else? Bruce, I don't want to put her on the spot, but I'm really curious because um, we've, got, we've got Louisa with us from Rotaract. If you have similar discussions with potential Rotaract members and what their expectations are. Mm. 
Are you I'm sorry, uh, just to clarify, like, do you mean like as role directors? Yeah, so if someone's interested in joining, do you find out, you know, what are their interests? What, what's, why, why would they make a, a good fit with Rotaract and what that is? Because it may be different than people that are joining Rotary Clubs. I'm just curious. Yeah, um, so like that's something that we, work, we want to start doing. Um, I feel a lot of, as we are connected to the university, a lot of our members join because they want to be part of, like involved in campus. Um, so a lot of them don't really know what, or don't really understand what a rotary is. And what we want to do is start doing like, um, we don't want to do like a whole orientation because um, it could be like tiring and we're all busy with school and everything. Uh, but we want to do like an intro to what rotary and rotaract is uh, for those that join without actually knowing what it is. Um, and actually like in all my notes uh, for today, it's ask them what their focus is, why they joined. Uh, so it's definitely something that I'm going to start doing um, now that um, next week when we have our, our general meeting, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start implementing this because I think it's really important, um, especially as, you know, like sometimes um, students, we have a lot of potential, but we, we just don't know how to focus our you know, are willing to do things. So I'm, I'm definitely going to implement that. Good. Thank, Thank you, Louisa. I think it's also clear that you <clears throat> talk about us being a service organization with multiple opportunities to serve, about the acclimation to becoming a member, you know, um, through the NEOS organization, the, the NEOS committee and how you find out about different things, but giving people some background information about the operational aspect of the club. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bruce, thank you. Bruce, this is Lori. We, um, to take on to, to Sandy's comment about NEOS, um, we do something this year, it's called the 321 report. We have quite a few, oh. We have quite a few committees in Lincoln 14, and sometimes our members, whether they're NEOs or they've moved on to their blue badge, don't always know the best way to get involved. So um, again, President Eric started this report called 321, and it's at the beginning of each, um, well, right around the beginning of each meeting. He has the chair of that committee just give three fast, quick pieces of information about that particular committee um, to help inform our members that you know here's here's something you may be interested in joining. One of our goals this year is that we will have a hundred percent of our members are involved in a committee so it's helping us go back to our goals and our strategic plan um, but we are getting we also evaluate each of our Tuesday meetings we have a survey that we do at the end and people say that that's been really helpful for them just to kind of have a clue what it is that we're all doing. It's all service, but some people want to do certain kinds of service. <laughs> right. And not other kinds of service. Well, thank you, Lori. And uh, I also wanted to thank you earlier on. You talked about the, your, your committee structure and, and the fact that your membership committee, you have a, you have a separate subcommittee simply to keep, to track yeah. those people, right? Yeah, we have three of them. We have we have one that's for recruiting. We have NEOS that Sandy is talking about, and we have co-chairs of that group. And that group is designed to take brand new members and help them move from red badge to blue badge. Right. And then we have another committee called engagement. And engagement is once you've moved to blue badge, so it's designed to get those people who maybe, we see that most of them tend to leave after the third year. And so again, it's to try and increase their engagement in our committees um, so we don't lose those members and have to replace them. Okay, gotcha. Okay, and so of, go ahead. One of the things that we also have learned over time is that um, we can probably do incredible presentations, but until that new member feels that relationship and that they belong and they have found their place, that they are able to demonstrate, you know, some compliance with their strengths yeah. or their selections as well. 
um, that connection, that relationship is a big deal. I belong. I am a part of. Right. Very and that's good. That's a huge thing. Let me ask you this question as a group. Um, so the first question was, you know, do we set expectations? Does this differ? Do these expectations differ or um, for current members as well as prospective members? And does it differ based on age or position in the workforce or any type of or maybe even retirement status, something like that? Probably. Do expectations change? I think so. Sandy? Oh, I really don't think so. Um, we are what we are what we are. Um, you know, folks will select according to perhaps their comfort zone. Um, we, you know, they, we have, I think, a variety of opportunities across the board where someone may feel, man, this is, that's going to take way too much energy for me. And then they'll do, they'll participate in one of the committees where there's a single, um, a single event such as, um, oh, the dictionary project or the birthday project or something. But if somebody wants to really get involved and it's a long-term piece, then it could be attached to fundraising like with our Rise Shine Give. Right. So, so in other words, you know, P individuals, expectations may not change, but they probably would change between the different types of people that you have in your club. Right? Exactly. Okay. So here, I've got a little activity for you. Now, the, the idea here is, do you think, let me have a show of hands. Do you think that, that, that some clubs, yeah, maybe even your club, um, set expectations, but they don't really follow through? Uh, what happens? Raise your hand if you think that's the case. Sometimes, sometimes. Uh, sometimes. Okay, so here's, here's what we're going to do. I want you to go in your book uh, da, 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 to insert BSC2 expectations and delivery exercise. We haven't done it. We haven't done a group exercise yet, so we're going to do one now. I don't think we've done one. Um, so what this is, it says considering we've got a we've got a whole uh, underneath there we've got different groups, that, but considering one group of the following list of groups of the following in relation to your club, complete the table using specific examples. Now in this case. What the table says is, here's the activity that we say we do, and this is the avenue of the service that it supports, and that's not so important. Uh, but, but if you can do that, I'll go ahead and put that in there. Now, what I want you to do is put a check mark by do you, you know, this promise, do you do it and do you do it well? Or is it promised we do it, but we don't do it very well because of a minimal effort? Or it's a promise. We set the expectation, but we don't do it. There is no promise. There are no expectations. We don't do anything. We just come in and hope for the best. <laughs> no promise, no expectations. We don't do it at all. Oh, but we do it. Yeah, but, yeah, but, the, la but the last one is we don't do it. All right. So I'll just put a check mark in there. And I, I would like for you to focus on either one or two. One is current members. Two is potential members. My personal view is the most important people are the, the ones that we really need to be watching out for are, the, are our new members because so many of them leave within the first three years. But we shouldn't ignore our existing members. There's right. other groups in here that we could use this for, but we're going to, we'll save those for another day. That's, you know, community, businesses, youth organization, any others, any, anyone that we come in contact with but the focus for this particular exercise, I want to be either current members or potential members. So choose one or the other. And you're, this is done individually for your club. And I want you to put as many activities as you think that you do to, to answer the expectations of your members, either potential members or existing members, and how well do they do that. And I want you to take about five minutes to do that and then I'll check back with you and then we'll share what you come up with. Any questions? Okay, let's begin. Yeah. <laughs> bless you. <laughs> bless you. Bless you. Oh my gosh, bless you again.
Got one minute to go. Okay, let's get some feedback now. Would anybody like to share what you came up with in terms of um, what was expected and or, or what was delivered? In your club, go ahead, Pat. I saw you raise your hand. Well, our club supports an orphanage in Juarez and we've had garage sales, but it's also on our bill and sometimes we use our fine money for that. And if they have a need, we take a collection at our meeting. So I think we follow through pretty good on that one. Okay, very good, thank you. Can anybody give us an example of one thing where we didn't follow, your club does not follow through on as well as you think it should? This is Sue from Lincoln East, I can give an example. Go ahead, Sue. Well, when I joined, luckily I was a Rotary Scholar about seven bazillion years ago. So I already knew a lot about Rotary. And it was a good thing because I didn't get any orientation. And, and then I looked uh, online and I saw that I could go to RLI1. And so I thought, oh, that'll be orientation. And I, I did. I went to that. And three or four months later, somebody said, well, did you get any orientation? And I said, no. But I did go to RLI1. And they said, oh, that should do it. Oh. So you're going to get you a chance to finish. That's why you're here. <laughs> Uh, hopefully you've learned a lot in RLI two and three. I haven't been to two, but I'm sure I'm learning a lot in three. And so I, I hope to make change. <laughs> okay. Who else would like to share real quickly, but you know, what, what expectations on, on what do you do well? Anybody, any that one that you do really well? Uh, I, I think the, all, all the clubs in Lincoln, uh, 14 Southeast and the evening club that uh, South sponsored, it's a new one whose name escapes me and Nikki can tell who, what it is, but annually we do the dictionary project. That's where every fourth grader in public and parochial schools in Lincoln receives a free dictionary. And that one of the most fulfilling things I've ever done is delivered them to schools in uh, less affluent parts of the city. And from, you know, when you see somebody that's the only book they've ever had of their own is what you've given them is, is that dictionary. It, it, uh, it makes it all worthwhile. Very good, thank you. Jenny, I thought you saw you raise your hand as well. Yes, uh, Sunrise Rotary in Rio Rancho, we have a flag raising uh, program where we sell flags to the community. And then for every uh, event where you have to raise your flags, uh, Labor Day, uh, Flag Day, Veterans Day, all the days that you put flags out, uh, we go in as a group and put the flags up for them, take them down at night, bring them back, put them up the next morning. This is like a three-day weekend. So that's turned out pretty good because everybody that signs up and says they're going to do it, they do it. These, this group is, um, they're all hard workers. So it's, a, it's fun to be in, a part of a group like that. Outstanding. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, Anybody me? else like to share? Ah, uh, down about a, a Janelle. Yeah, um, for me too, just like Jenny, um, we rarely have to ask for, or beg, I should say, for volunteers. Um, we have a very volunteer-focused club, um, but also we have a lot of really skilled 
um, you know, like craftsmen and handymen um, that have a lot of resources for that too. So, I mean, our club isn't afraid to get our hands dirty. I mean, we're, we're doing that highway cleanup. We are, you know, doing all of the landscaping and the grounds work. Um, and it's really awesome to see, you know, we're not just, you know, handing people a check, you know, like we actually get in there and we get our hands dirty um, and really help the community. And I think that's where we excel. Okay, super. If I could add something to, ahead, uh, to tag on to Don's comment, he, the four Rotary Clubs of Lincoln, which by the way, the, the evening one is Lincoln Giving Spirits Evening Club. But the four Rotary Clubs in Lincoln do a lot of things together. We're fortunate that we're a city that's big enough to have multiple clubs. And because we do things together, our clubs automatically have exposure to things outside of our club. And so we think that that expands their, their knowledge of, of what Rotary does, gives them better ideas of what Rotary is all about. And, and we think it strengthens their belief in being a Rotary member. Super, okay. One more. Uh, does anybody have one where you think that uh, you know you do? Uh, um, there are expectations, but they but they're not followed through on. Like we heard from oh. Sue earlier. Bruce, I have one. Okay. <clears throat> we we are expected to contribute a hundred dollars per person to the Rotary Foundation, mm -hmm. and and we don't actually do that. You know, it ends up that our club does the average because some people are very generous, but we don't actually do that. Yeah, I, I think many clubs are like that, uh, Governor. They, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and sometimes it's, it's in the blank, so understandable. To yeah, just we, we should be more clear about what we're actually expecting. Yeah. You know, hey, Bruce, I have a couple. Um, okay. Real quick, uh, what we do well on the El Paso Club is. Uh, Fundraising. The club always comes up with great ideas for fundraisers like the Wine Fest, and we're doing a Top Golf uh, deal. One thing that we don't, uh, <clears throat> this might be beneficial for all clubs, but we don't kind of follow through in it, is when we get a new member in. Uh, when I'm president, I'm going to institute kind of a mentorship program to, to get them involved from day one instead of kind of, all right, you're a member now, now go sit down and watch this presentation <laughs> kind of thing. You know, it's, it's, they need more engagement right off the bat because if you don't engage them in the beginning of their membership, they kind of get lost in the shuffle. I've seen that happen a couple of times. Right. And, and I think a lot of clubs fall into that trap. They're so happy to get new members. There's a lot of, uh, you know, a, a lot of excitement uh, when that person's inducted into the, into the club. And then we tend to forget about them. And, and, and that first month is critical um that we keep them involved um and but that's i think that's part of the you know one problem that our club had for a while is we weren't really uh making sure uh that uh our new members were we were meeting their expert expectations we have i think done a much better job of that lately in the last few years okay we're going to move along since so we, we only have about five minutes left to go here i think do do yep do, 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 do. Uh, 25. Well, we got 10 minutes to go. So um, let's jump over here and talk about, is there a dis, so if there, if there is a disconnect between what is promised and what is delivered, and many of you have said, yes, you've seen that, what's the, what's the result? And this can be, this can be for new members or it could be from existing members. They lose interest and they go away. Yeah, they, that, that, that's, and, uh, and what we really have a problem, and I know our club suffers, and I know other clubs do too, is tracking these people that all of a sudden they, don't, they stop showing up for meetings. Yeah, they disappear. You know, they just kind of disappear, and all of a sudden somebody, you know, says, hey, I haven't seen Fred for a long time. You know, neither have I. We should check up on that. Well, we need to, you know, I've heard already people talking about, well, we, you know, if, if so much time goes by, maybe even just two weeks, Give them a call. A phone call goes a long way mm -hmm. uh, to just keeping people engaged. Anything else? Any other ways that you guys do these? these sort of, how do you keep track of your new people or even your current members when they don't show up for a while? I'd like to share a story. Uh, this is where we, uh, we just had, well, at our um, induction meeting, we uh, awarded a prize to our Rotarian of the Year. And uh, this person has been a main contributor for quite a few years. 
after that meeting, that person resigned. Oh. And, and we're, we're clueless as to why. We, we've tried to find out. But unfortunately, it seems that there's some politics going on in our club. Ooh. And this person, as well as the other person who did our four-way test program, who was her friend, also decided to resign. Um, so that's, that's pretty sad. And, and we really don't know why. And, you know, when... when... Rotarians leave Rotary. We ask them to fill out, you know, a questionnaire of is why did they leave, and how many times do you think we really get the right answer on that? None. Mm, yeah, it depends on the situation, doesn't it? You know, but if there's a conflict or something like that, generally they'll say, well, well, you know, I have this to do or I have something else to do. They won't really tell you. Um, so, so sometimes exit surveys are not all that accurate. Um, what I've found is find, you know, who was their best friend in Rotary and talk to them. Maybe they Bruce, have some insights. Yeah. Bruce, may I just quickly interject? Go ahead, Sonny. Now that, now that all of the Rotary world is examining uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion and how Rotary can be even better in those domains, it's a great opportunity for clubs to examine their culture and see where we may be doing something traditional that isn't necessarily enticing for everyone. Mm. We'll hear more about that as we go forward. Okay, thank you. Um, so are there any activities? Let's, we're about ready to wrap this up here in the next five minutes or so. Um, are there any activities that your club can do that would realistically meet the expectations of one particular group, either potential members or existing members um, that would be really important to your club, do you think? And, and, does anybody see anything that you think you could do in, into, in addition to what you're doing now that would help our new members or our existing members as far as meeting their expectations? I have an idea. Um, I always thought that maybe a new member should be assigned a, a mentor. Ah. Like someone who's been in the club for a while to kind of be with them to help introduce them around, to help explain things and, you know, kind of be their person. Yeah, that's an excellent idea. How many, how many of you raise your hands, uh, have mentorship programs in your clubs or have had? Okay, a few. Okay, that's good. Uh, when I was president of my club, uh, I, I did institute a mentor program. Uh, to get the more senior members in there involved with our new members. Uh, I was a mentor myself for a number of years. That's kind of fallen by the wayside. That's one of the things that I think is very useful. It works great, but it every time we change presidents, we kind of have to remind ourselves, hey, this is a good program. It's probably one that we ought to keep on going. But what happens is, no, other things get in the way. COVID gets in the way. Uh, Mm. And before we know it, uh, we, we're, we've forgotten all about our, our mentorship program. I like the idea, actually, of assigning our older members to be the mentors. It seems as they get older, they get less and less involved. Um, and this just kind of pulls them right back in. And, and yeah. also, you know, reminds well, both ways for you how valuable they are. It's outstanding. That's cool. Yeah. So Oops. any of these things, go ahead, Sunny. One more quick idea is bringing back craft talks or whatever you would call them, classification talks or introduction talks where mm -hmm. everybody gets to say something about who they are. Oh yeah, and not only who they are, but what they do. Exactly. Our, our younger members, you know, it used to be you could not talk about your business. Oh, right. oh that Except has once. changed. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's no longer, you know, you were fined if you talked about your business. In fact, some clubs still do that. But now what do our younger members need to do? Especially young business owners, they have their own business. Yeah. What do they want to do? They want to talk about network. About the network. That's the key. Yeah, give them an opportunity. Let them do that. Give them a minute. Tell them what their business is. Pat. When I was, I was on the Bridges to Prosperity with the El Paso Club, they had a rotary reveal, they called it. 
and one Rotary member gave a little two, three minute speech about themselves and what they were doing, and there was no fine involved. Ah, uh, very good. Okay, super. Any Bruce, questions? I'm going to wrap this up. We've got three minutes left. Any any questions or things that you would like to, you know, tips and techniques for meeting expectations, either of our new members or our existing members? Anything you want to share? Bruce, may I mention something? Yes. This is Arturo. And, and you know, I think that's kind of like the purpose of having that uh, Rotarian highlight of the week. Because for the new members, I think that's the attractive part for the younger member, the networking and being able to be part of this. So we want to make sure that people are aware and we have a lot of talent amongst our members, you know, people that have done and are doing amazing things. And we want to know that that's the attractive part of Rotary. You're not only coming in, you know, to, to be part of a group, but you're coming into a group that is very special and that have a lot, that has a lot to offer. So if you have any stories, send them my way and we'll be glad to post them. Excellent. Thanks, Arturo. You there, Eric? Uh, so being the, the young Rotarian who owns a business who wants to network, uh, I got to do one of the classification talks when I started. And it was actually huge for me because it allowed me to establish myself in the club. And then it allowed others to, to find common ground. We started talking. I've gotten business out of them, but we were able to, to make those connections early on because they understood who I was and where I was coming from. So those classification talks are really, really helpful, especially for the younger members who, who do want to be able to network with everyone around them. Yeah. We just got to remember, you know, our, I know our club, uh, the, uh, the Del Sol club, um, we used to do that. We used to have on you know, almost every week, we'd have a, an opportunity for one of our members to get up and talk about themselves. But lately, especially with COVID-19, uh, all our meetings have been online. Uh, we haven't seen that very much. So that's one of the things I mean, talk to our new president about, say, hey, you might want to consider doing this. You know? So anyway, I have really enjoyed uh, speaking with you all. Um, hopefully you'll, there's a takeaway here. Uh, we don't want, we, you know, we, we need to keep track of our new members. Uh, as, and learn what their expectations are. We also need to know what the expectations are of our current members. Uh, I think those are the two most important categories uh, that, that we need to, you know, to, uh, to concentrate on as far as building a stronger club. The other ones are important, you know, outside of the club, the people that we work with, the, the, the nonprofits that we support with the money that we raise. Those are always important as well, but you know, the lifeblood of Rotary is its membership. And we need to be doing everything we can to attract you know, good members and keep them for as long as possible. So with Bruce, that, I'm going to turn it back over. Bruce, uh, can I just add something real quick? Oh, you may, Jeff. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I saw you. No, no. You, just, you just reminded me. So one of my favorite companies, it's Ritz-Carlton Hotel Chain. Mm -hmm. Their mission statement, because I always think about, you know, what's, what do they think their focus is, is uh, ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. So first of all, it's, it's memorable. But secondly, the, the whole crux, the crux of that is they focus on their employees. And if their employees are engaged and satisfied and loyal, then they're going to have good customer service. So ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen, that, that's, that's, that's their mantra. Okay, I'll turn it over to Kathy. Thank you all. All right. Hey, great presentation. Thanks so much, Bruce. And uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and continue on with uh, uh, Past District Governor Tom Lindsay, who's going to be talking to us about making a difference, which I think is why we're all here. Thank you so much, Tom. Tom, you're on mute. You are. There we go. Thanks for attending our Leadership Institute for Rotary. I, I think, I hope you get from this is that our leaders in Rotary are each individual member. I always say Rotary is a group of leaders willing to follow. So I, do, I hope you got some information to help you uh, take your role as Rotarian and as a leader. Uh, I wish I had some of this information when I first got into Rotary. The information I had in training was from person to person, and you can imagine what it went to. It's like sitting in a circle and giving a word to pass around. Well, after 10 years, they made me president, and what information I had has been passed to me that way. 
So you can imagine the idea I had about Rotary. So trainings are important, important to go to. We meet new friends and we learn a lot about Rotary and, and how to design our Rotary where it, where it does fit the, the model of Rotary International. I know one of the common themes through this was gathering of information, I believe, knowing a lot about what you're going to do. It fits under grants, strategic planning, membership, is getting your base information. And due diligence has been stressed of this is so important for each of us to do this, whatever you're working on, whatever level you're working on, and probably even on your personal life. It's hard to make change without information making good goals, and, and we talked about that. Jeff talked a lot about uh, making uh, strategic planning, but it kind of goes for anything that you do. You need great planning. Uh, I always say I use uh, entering behavior. I list a list of things that are relevant to what I need. Then I list down what I want to do, a terminal. And then I put methods and materials, how I'm gonna do it, is it practical? And then an evaluation. That evaluation becomes your new behaviors or your new information that you make changes with. I find myself, if I do this, I'm really successful at whatever I do from my rotary, rotary business and also to my personal career over the years as a speech therapist. I found that the days I thought my clients didn't do very well, I had not done very well either in my gathered thoughts and in my approach and my detailed approach to what I was going to do. So that's very important. I, you had lots of information in this, this se these sessions. It's easy to make a list of things to do. <laughs> you can make a list of 20, 30. I went to many workshops uh, from motivational whatever and I make my list and never do it. Uh, one of the challenges is narrowing that list down to one or two things. Uh, if I was faced with 20 things every morning, I just couldn't do it. I wouldn't do anything. So I'd like for each of you at this point, I'm gonna go around and ask you, but I'll give you about a minute to think, name one thing, one activity or one thing you would do in your rotary life that you'd like to do. So I'll give you about a minute. Okay, that was a half a minute, but we'll go on. Would you, I, I can't see all the hand raising, so can people help me or do I need to call on people? We'll be glad to help you if you wanna raise your hand and we'll be, we'll let you know, uh, Thank you. Governor, who raised their hand to participate. Was it Sunny? Yes. I've talked to district trainer Jeff about this already. It's becoming clearer and clearer to me that we need and want a group of people who are willing to facilitate planning sessions with our clubs. So that's what I want is for us to create that and make sure they have the resources they need to be great at it. Great. Gordon? One thing that's on my radar screen right now is to increase the number of children we have participating in our Dolly Parton uh, book club. Um, we have about a dozen, but we could certainly get a lot more considering the, um, the area our, our club covers. I think that's very good. Our, our local club does this, and we have 700 people now involved, students. For young people. So uh, it's very successful you get it going. Do I see other hands? Janelle and then Bob. Um, for me this I don't really have a timeline um, but one of the things that I've really been interested in is becoming a district governor. Um, that can be long time down the road um, but like I, I just love the idea of going and seeing all of the different clubs and seeing how they do things and meeting all of those different people so I think that that's something that is long term I'd like to do. Excellent. I think it's great. Uh, our hats off to Sunny because as district governors or past district governors one of our highlights was visiting all the clubs 
and, and that personal contact. Sunny's doing a great job and doing what she can do, and she's working under some handicap. So everybody should give Sunny a big, big <laughs> round of applause. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Janelle, it's the best job in the world, I promise. <laughs> I'm sure it is. I'll take your word for it. And Zoom is a godsend. Thank goodness. I get to see so many yeah. Rotarians every day. So we had Bob Bernard and then t Team Sexton? Uh, yeah, for me as president-elect, I am looking at trying to re-envision our Rotary Club to meet the post-COVID environment. So right. I, what I heard today that fits into that is the first thing I need to do is find out what our member ex expectations are. So we have right now probably about half of our members participating uh, when we did uh, Zoom meetings and now that we've started back meeting together. And I don't want us to lose that other half. That's very important. And every club's going to face this. So Tim was next. Anybody else? Uh, we have Peg and then Lori afterwards. The Raton Club um, has always had a, a focus on uh, the education and the link there between the club and and the students at schools and stuff two years ago we got started in the imagination library program and we had a goal of off. <laughs> we had a we had a goal in five years that we would be um, uh, up to uh, 300 uh, involved in the program based on our demographic and stuff. And um, in less than a year and a half, we have hit 250. And uh, we've so far had 90 additional uh, graduates from the program. So it's a really a great thing that has cemented <laughs> um, the club and brought it together and, and gives a real focus uh, for that emphasis and in providing those books for the young people. Great. We had Peg, Lori, and Ann who rose, raised their hand. Okay. Um, one thing that I've thought about from today is that maybe our um, board needs to do kind of a retreat or something and spend some time and make sure that, you know, review our plan and um, make sure what we're doing is intentional because I think we've come down to our board meetings are always very rushed because everybody's got to get off to work and whatever. And we don't take the time to um, really think about what we're doing. We're just responding to everything that needs to go on. And then just one other thing I want to say, and this just popped into my head, is that um, I think I want to start a uh, rotary walk to just get people walking around like the parks in town or something and we could get together it'd be kind of a social thing but it's good for us to get out physically and whatever and connect because it's really hard to connect right now with um even on zoom and stuff okay. great great that's a great Thanks. idea can i go Lori. okay thank you um what I um, want to do is I am going to uh, attempt to reimagine RILA for our district and um, for my club. It is a definite, definitely a growth opportunity for us. And um, so I'm, uh, I'm taking that on. This is my second year as the district Rotary RILA chair. So, yeeks. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Uh, George, you've got your hand raised. Do you want to go ahead and I'll lower your hand? Yes. Um, so this is more of a global, although I would, I've been dealing with it from a local level. Um, I'd like to focus on diversity. I think um, our organization will survive when our organization reflects what our country looks like. And um, I know we've been challenged and some places are much better at it than others, but I can speak from California that we've done not a very good job of diversity. And that, that lack of that has impacted how younger members look to be attracted to Rotary because they want to see what they feel is important, which is diversity. So 
it's a challenge I know we all face, but it's something that I think we can all aspire to. Thank you. Uh, let's see, Louisa, go ahead. You've got your hand raised. Thank you. Um, so something that I want to do is, first of all, start connecting with all the Rotary clubs um, around the district, because I think that's really important. Um, know their expectations, well, know the expectations of my club, but also expectations of the club around the, the district. Um, and just share all of this information because it's, it's just amazing, but it's not gonna be useful if I just give this information to myself. So that's something that I want to do is, uh, you know, like share all of this so like useful information um, that I have here uh, to all the Rotaract clubs, starting with mine. Um, so that we can start restructuring how we plan and how we um, expect, um, sorry, how we actually do all of this project so that we can become more, more successful and more um, sustainable in the long run. And hopefully all of the rotor actors end up being Rotarians because that's the purpose of, of being a rotor actor, right? So Great. that's something that I for sure want to do. Thank you. Uh, and? Um, I have three things I'd like to, to do, and these aren't all things I would personally be doing, but uh, so um, one would be to involve more both old and new members in our major fundraising. Um, on the day of those events, we have, it's a whole club project. We have a lot of participation, but leading up to it, all the work in planning and preparing um, is shouldered by uh, the same few people. And if those people decide they're tired <laughs> and they left, we would not even know what to do. Um, and then the other one our clubs talked about is bringing the, the red uh, badge to blue badge training back for new members. We've had that in the past. Um, but it's been dropped for several years. And, um, and the third thing would be to facilitate becoming a hybrid club where people could participate in person or uh, online in some form or fashion. Uh, we actually have members that have been around long term that pay dues but are not able to attend. And if we could work out a hybrid in-person slash online meeting at the same time, perhaps some of those people could actually attend. Great, good ideas. Uh, Lori, you've got your hand raised. So just quickly, Anne, get a hold of Lincoln 14 because that's exactly what we're doing. We have the hybrid meetings and our attendance has actually gone up because we have a lot of people who are not able to make it to the noon meetings and now they're regularly joining. Um, and we meet in person depending on what our um, health department uh, COVID meter is. And so we haven't been able to meet in person lately, but hopefully we will be able to do that again. Um, I just wanted to um, encourage the the host today and all the decision makers. So Nikki, and I really think that the there was great value in how we all came together from our different districts and um, different clubs and maybe moving forward more our RLI sessions could incorporate this type of opportunity. Great. Yes. Anybody I else? agree. Absolutely. Any okay. other? Well, we've hand? become good. I'm sorry. I was going to say we've become good friends with five five two zero. So I think you're going to see us stay connected there for sure. Oh boy, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> okay. okay. Number one, you're in a position as a leader in Rotary or a member or where you have a an actual title. It doesn't matter. Leaders don't need titles. Sometimes to make change is difficult. We talked about lots of ways to do it in these sessions, but organization is one of them. I used to teach a class to young therapists on how to make change. Uh, in speech therapy, obviously speech is a volunteer activity, so you have to figure out a way to do it. 
but I always made them to make a program about their self first. <laughs> so for pr practice makes perfect. So pick something you'd like. I'd suggest you pick something you want to change in yourself or do. Write it down, figure out the due diligence, what you have to do, the things you need to do, and try it and evaluate it. Then you'll know more closely what you're going to go through when you're involved with your club and your job and things like this. Uh, it's difficult to change yourself, much more difficult, I can assure you. <laughs> but it gives you the practice of thinking of those processes. To Jeff, in his presentation, there's a, a handout called Self-Evaluation. It's eight pages. Oh, it, great. <laughs> uh, I don't really say you need to fill it out, but I'd recommend that you read all the items in that because it gives you such a wonderful scope of rotary. We used to, we asked presidents and president elects to fill out goals and objectives and we give them all this stuff to do. Part of the exercise is looking at your club as a whole and rotary as a whole rather than a narrow segment. And this eight page guide that in Jeff's session will give you a great insight and thoughts about rotary and I, I recommend that highly. Part of this session also is to get your input on what would you change in the RLI presentation, what needs to be put there, and things like this. It's kind of the exit, exit interview. <laughs> so I'd like to know first, all of us want to know what you think was good and what you think you'd like to add to it too. We don't want to hear the bad. <laughs> and Tom, you're talking about the entire Tom, you're talking about the entire program, like what part the entire one, training. The entire training. Okay. Uh, what you like best and then what you'd like to see added to it. Well, and again, raise your hands, and Jeff is so good about picking the hands up. Close the door Okay. Uh, Don, is your hand raised? Yeah, I, I think the thing that uh, impressed me in the very first session and, and increased in the second session and even more now was the ability to be together with groups from different cities, different parts of the country and what have you, an exchange of ideas. Well, it works for you. Well, it didn't work for us. And, and well, we tried this and it was great and so on and so forth. Uh, I've received lots of, of good ideas and good information from people that I don't think I would have received otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, and what would I like to change? Nothing. <laughs> It's great the way it is. Great. This really was an outstanding opportunity. Um, I love the Zoom factor. Um, I mean, if we're going to have to make it work, then this is probably one of the best opportunities we have. And it's wonderful to hear about things from across, you know, the country. Um, there's just some things I would like to be in touch with a couple people about because I would like more information. So I don't know if we would have the opportunity to do that in a one-on-one -on -one situation, um, but I found some good things. And I think this was, I think it had all kinds of pluses attached to it. I, I didn't find a negative thing at all or something I think would need to be changed. Great. Uh, Gordon? Uh, a couple of things. Uh, for RLI 1, I was hoping to attend, but I ended up um, being out of the town. So I went back to look at the, um, the recordings. And that was really, really tough um, to try to absorb it all, sit still for that length of time, and, and not necessarily be part of a conversation. So my impressions of today far exceeded <laughs> what, I, what I did in the recording as far as you know, trying to learn. So I think it's important for people to participate in the Zoom call live as opposed, as opposed to saying, oh, well, I could do this in my free time. So I would encourage um, anybody who's interested in RLI, particularly if we continue doing it by Zoom, 
to participate and don't think they could just listen to the recording and learn. The, the other comment I have is in, for this session, we did get a handout, which was very useful. Uh, but in ROI 1, I'm still looking for the handout. Uh, I can't find it. I don't think we got one. Maybe we did, but uh, there might be somewhere. So those are my comments. Thank you. Great. More? Hank? Hank? Um. I really appreciated it and learned a lot. And, um, you know, I've been wanting to do RLI for years, but I never made the time for it. So I'm, I, you know, the only reason that I'm here now is because, you know, I'm a president elect and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to do it. But it would be such good information for everyone. And I don't know how we can encourage all our other members to do it. But one thing I thought about was if we could make it and I mean, I realize these are a lot of like hour blocks or whatever, but if we could make it even smaller down to like a 20 minute block that people could use it at their meetings and then it would get out to a lot more people, you know, make a smart, smaller um, subject uh, area or whatever. And if, cause if we could get all Rotarians to have learned a lot of this information, we could be much stronger clubs. Good point. Matthew? Uh, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed, this is my third one. I've enjoyed every minute of, of this program. Uh, I have about uh, 20 pages. I'm an, I'm an idea picker. And so I take <laughs> what interests me and I start writing it down. I got to compile all this stuff. And what I, I know is going to happen is uh, as soon as I, I start my term, which is in July, I'm going to totally revamp our uh, daily, our weekly, uh, agenda for our meetings and incorporate a lot of the stuff that I've picked up that's going to really engage members. And what I really liked is, is profiling members. Um, I think it was Pat who brought it up that uh, the El Paso Club does. It's called the two minute drill. Um, I'm going to reincorporate that. Uh, we also do what's called the, the Rotary Hero of the Month. We just started doing that, which is a neat idea and they kind of showcase one of the Rotarians behind the scenes doing a lot of good work. So uh, yeah, thank you all for, I mean, I got a lot of uh, uh, homework after this to, to ingest, but uh, it's mm -hmm. been very beneficial for me and I look forward to it. Thank you. Anybody else? One thing that was common that we talked about is communicating with each other and the district and the clubs are doing the best they can right now in the circumstances. And Jeff can tell you straight out, I'm not a real advocate of Zoom or anything else. I like person to person meetings, but the world has changed and its practicality says we have to do this. I was lucky in my uh, rotary life that I had people mentor me. Uh, when I first joined the club in Deming in 1979, uh, back about a half year, they said, you're going to be on the foundation committee, which I had no idea what that was. And they sent me to a meeting in Rio Doso. Then with the, uh, the governor had brought in the Rotary International Secretary to talk about the foundation. And that's where I really started becoming enthusiastic about the foundation and its projects. As I went through my career uh, in the early 2000s, when I was involved with the, as an assistant governor, I went to a training like this uh, with all the assistant governors and so on and all the governor people. And I got a phone call from the governor, uh, Bonnie Farrell, a governor elect then says, Tom, go ahead and do that idea you talked about. I said, what idea? She said, the one we listened to. <laughs> so uh, we all need lots of ideas <laughs> and out of it comes something. But I was fortunate that I had great mentors over the time. You want to be governor? I didn't ever have an objective to be governor necessarily. I always thought it'd be really cool to do that. Uh, just keep working, working with Rotarians, go to trainings, uh, get yourself involved, and you never know where your rotary path is gonna take you, but wherever it takes you is gonna be great. Uh, and I wanna leave the rest of the time for Jeff and, and all our any presenters that are here to give some final comments. Thank you, Tom. Kathy, are you with us? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I am here. Thank you. 
So um, great comments. Um, so thank you all for sharing. Uh, one of the things I'd like to do would be to use those comments then to encourage others then to participate in RLI because as, as many of you have expressed, um, uh, I was just amazed at how much I learned and thought that everybody, every Rotarian, whether new or wanting to be uh, ready to be a district governor, uh, should participate. And so, uh, Governor Sonny or Governor Bob, how about you guys? Anything that you might want to share at this, at this moment? And by the way, Tom, thanks so much. A great presentation. Great conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Bob has his hand up. Bob, you get to go first. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll save the best for last. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, first, uh, and I, I know a lot of people echo this, I want to congratulate and thank uh, uh, Renee and Kathy and Jeff for putting together such a wonderful program that uh, does so so much good uh, for our district and as you can see other districts as well. So congratulations on another wonderful uh, uh, program. I uh, really appreciate what you've done. We, I think uh, Kathy said we're graduating uh, six PEs today uh this has been and uh, uh the one um anybody else that has um been to some but not all uh you can pick these up later on and, and graduate uh it's great foundation for the pe training coming up next year uh so we'll be able to build on what you've already learned and uh, make even a better um, a president down the road i look forward to working with all of you and again thanks for the opportunity sunny Louisa, you have your hand up. Oh. Yeah, I just wanted to um, to ask, and maybe as a petition, um, if I don't know if in the future um, the same well, the RL I could be like extended or more ro rotor actors could join because it's amazing, it's great, and if if the purpose of this is also um, you know, like having more members and a, a more, um, like a stronger base in Rotary, I think it's important to focus on us Rotary actors. Um, so like, I, I would just love um, to see in the future more Rotary actors join uh, the RLI because it's, it's amazing. And um, yeah, just I am, it would be great to have more Rotary actors. Thank you so much. I, com I agree completely. In fact, I'm on a mission to have road directors on every district committee. So we have, we yeah. definitely want to be expanding our reach and, and including them in all of these trainings. Let's you and I work on how to make that happen, okay? Awesome, great, yes. So let's see, oh, I have so much I want to say. My heart is very full. It, first of all, um, thank you, Jeff, and Kathy and Renee for putting this on and Jeff and Jeff and the other presenters are true and Bruce and uh, and Doreen and um, Tom am I missing someone I think we you've all been extraordinary Bruce your lips are moving but you're muted <laughs> anyway um thank you everyone you were excellent the people who attended this are no less excellent this has been an extraordinary session and i i don't believe i've ever been in one of these where we had four districts represented i'm thrilled at how well it works i think we want to do much more of this it's a rich experience in fact i i think you know, some of us joined Rotary because we were told that Rotary offered leadership opportunities. This is one of the jewels in the crown, is it not? This is one of our very best. And even if you don't see yourself as necessarily stepping into club and district leadership in the immediate future, you lead from wherever you are. And Rotary is richer for your having participated in this opportunity. So I thank you. I salute you for getting up in the dark to be here and for giving such a big chunk of your Saturday to this experience. And I salute you even more for the quality of your participation. This has really been extraordinary. Um, I guess the other thing I'd say is, you know, in addition to the fact that we never stop learning about Rotary, uh, we never stop making new friends. 
and I find myself, I hope this isn't an ungubernatorial thing to say, but I find myself falling in love with all of you. So I just wanted you to know. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be with you today. Sunny? Yes. In my years in Rotary, the name of this chapter is Making a Difference. And I think Sonny can tell you too, we, we're from smaller clubs. In all my years of Rotary, no one ever asked me how big my club was, how much money I made, where I was from. They said, can you do this? Because you can make a difference and each of you can do that. Thank yeah. you. <clears throat> I'll quickly add also that until the last year or so, maybe two years now, um, I had no intention of being a district governor. In fact, I was running the other way as fast as I could. So I have to tell you, it is a big surprise to discover that it is the best job. And uh, so I encourage you to keep going, Janelle, and anyone else who's interested. Thank you. Good to be with you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Sonny. We're very golly. Uh, Janelle had a great comment, and I just echo that. Then, yes, we we appreciate your your support so much. I would not be here if it weren't for Sonny. So uh, the I, I've appreciated this opportunity. Nikki, you wanted to share something. Please, I'm glad you said something. I, I would not even want to forget you. Well, thank you. It's, it's difficult. You know, it's, it's a great opportunity to, to work together with different districts, but it's also easy to forget that we are different districts and we don't always do the same thing, but we learn so much from each other. And I will not be as eloquent as Sunny in what I'm going to say, but I will tell you that um, as we're promoting Rotary Leadership Institute, the, one of the things I always try to say is this is not position specific. It's not just for presidents. It's not just for committee chairs. It's to enrich your understanding and your love for Rotary. And it will do that. And then from that, things like wanting to be district governor, those things grow. In fact, I had a president from one of our clubs, uh, one of our larger clubs that said, I would never have been able to do this if it hadn't been for Rotary Leadership Institute. So it was a wonderful thing to hear. And I, I'm just glad that we, we made this connection. Jeff, thank you. And Kathy, your leadership has been fabulous. And so I just want to say thank you. And I look forward to our next session. Great. Wonderful. Yeah. Thanks so much. Okay. Anyone else have anything they'd like to say? I, I think Bob just checked out. And that's too bad because he is one of our graduates. But uh, any anyone else? All right. Well, let me let me put on an appropriate hat for the moment. Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been able to wear it for a while, so thank you for this opportunity. So uh, this is just amazing. So, Nikki, I, I, and, uh, I understand that Lori Benton, Lori, uh, Omaha West, and Don Rabbi with Lincoln Club, you guys are graduating. You've completed the three uh, parts of RLI, Rotary Leadership Institute, and so Congratulations to you. Uh, I understand. Yay, hey, that's right. Go Nebraska. Woohoo! Round of applause. <laughs> so, uh, oh, there's the RLI pins then. So Tom has some RLI pins. Nikki, I believe you have some as well that you're going to be able to uh, to uh, send to your graduates. And, we will, uh, yeah, we will do that. And just okay. to be accurate, Don's uh, club is Lincoln South. Oh, uh, since there okay. are four, I just uh, like to make sure that we get that correct. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, one of my best friends, I've known her since junior high and then had been an Air Force brat. There's not too many uh, people that I know uh, beyond junior high. And so she lives in Lincoln. So uh, I'll have to give one of you guys oh, her address and you can you can say hi to her. And by the way, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, Peg's hat does not scare anyone half to death. So uh, I don't think I don't think she's Minerva. Uh, is that the one with the snakes? Oh, yeah. I don't know. She's doing the snake thing. I, I thought it was aluminum foil. I thought you were. I thought maybe Medusa. she was chasing away. What's that? Medusa. That's right. Medusa. Medusa? <laughs> yeah. Kathy, Kathy, would you list the names of all of our graduates? I will indeed. Yes, ma'am. So uh, let me let me go back to my file here. Let's see. So from the Ro uh, Rotary Club of Las Cruces, Rio Grande, we have Bob Barnard. Uh, from uh, UTEP Rotaract, uh, we have uh, Luisa Sanchez. Yay! 
From Clovis, we have rotating Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, what what fun! And man, just to watch you do your amazing work with the uh, with the image last time that was just so cool. From the Rotary Club of White Sands, we have my dear friend and partner in crime, Peg Krim. Um, from the Alamogordo Club, we have Mr. Pat Devine, who is the umpire leader for our Rotary Baseball League here in town. And so Pat's been, even when he wasn't a Rotarian, he was a Rotarian. Matthew Nyland from the El Paso or the Las Cruces Club, whichever he might want to attend. <laughs> Matthew Nyland, congratulations to you. Uh, George, uh, George, I can't pronounce your last name. How do you pronounce your last name? It's uh, Palakas. Palakas. So George deserves special kudos because he took parts one and two uh, when, five years ago. And wow. so to hang in there and finish up part three today is just is just fabulous. So George, so proud of you for hanging in there. What and, a uh, perseverance. <laughs> way to go, way to go, George. And then from the uh, Rotary Club of Albuquerque, we have Don Reed who's graduating. So uh, way to go, you guys. Now, what I can do then, yay, yay. District 5520 graduates, yay! And thank you, Nebraska, for cheering with us, yay! So I, I do have, I'd like to show, um, I would like to show uh, one of our graduating certificates then. And so, uh, uh, Jeff, by any chance, are you able to let me share my screen? You should be able to. All right, here we go, I think. Share screen and... Can y'all see? Uh, so this is uh, for Louisa. Can you see it? No. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Technology is a mixed blessing. I know, I know. I think I just needed to <laughs> click on the right one. Now, can we see it? Yes. Yeah. There we go. Yes. Oh, shoot. All right. I'm still not getting it right then. But anyway, so yes. Louisa, we we are just so proud of you and uh, so thankful for your participation. And I'm sorry that Jessica couldn't be here today then, but as a UTEP Rotaret president, uh, you, we really, really appreciate uh, all that you've done and participating with us. You've given us good new insights then. And uh, let, lastly, let me see, I'm just having all kinds of fun with myself here. Oh, that sounded kind of weird. All right, let me do this here then. Uh, I can't make myself bigger. <laughs> well, I'm still trying to get taller, but that's not working either. So, okay. <laughs> me too. All right, I give up. So maybe if you guys can see this. And so thanks to Governor Sunny, then everyone's going to get a... Uh, Let's share your screen, would you, so that we can... Oh, there we go. All right, there we go. Thank you, Jeff. I'm glad you're in control then. So, and uh, hmm, I need to do the reverse thing, right? But I'm not going to... It does say yes. people of action. Well, it works, yeah. Good. And then the uh, rotary, rotary symbol there then. So thanks to Governor Sunny, you guys will each get one of these masks and we'll get a pin to you. And um, anyway, you guys are awesome. So. And we'll make sure a, you're in the newsletter too. The, yes, I will get something in the newsletter, I will. So congratulations to everyone. So we'll look forward to the future collaborative efforts then. Um, who knows, maybe we've started something here and it will continue to grow. So. Thanks everyone for participating. I don't think Renee is with us any longer. So, uh, but Renee, I know would also say thank you. So any last words? Sue, are you, are you, say, are you going to say something, Sue Shurman? Nope, I just want to say thank you. This was really excellent. I agree. Thank you so much for letting us join you. It's been fabulous. I'm glad you guys did. Uh, great. Awesome. Thanks. All right, way to go. Y'all enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Uh, and uh, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Adios. Bye con Dios. Until we meet again. Thank Everybody you. Everybody stay safe. Bye, everyone.